What's going on guys? Listen, in trying to get you more content, um, I've reached down the areas in the nation, the early, early videos. Um, and I, I found one. It's the explanation of gun culture in the US. And it, it's a pretty interesting video. Excuse the <laughs> the small me in the corner, <laughs> but but hey, it was early on in the channel's history. But guys, I'm doing this because life in during the summer is on the go constantly. There's so many things to get to, and I'm actually headed out the door. And I decided, hey, I'll throw this video up today and see how you guys like it, because I feel like it belongs on the Rec Nation. So, and excuse the noise, that's our dog. Hey, Tuck. Up here. Right here. Right here. Up here. Anyway. Anyway, guys. Hope you guys enjoy it. Much love. Thank you, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next video. Later, guys. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Arius in the Nation. And today, I have decided to <laughs> to prod the bull let's let's see what comes out of the woodwork here uh i i don't i don't like long intros so i want to try to keep this as short as possible there is a video that i saw in my recommended that i have to click on and i think this i know that most of our demographic is uk based okay this is this video that we're going to check out is the origins of american gun culture Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what is said. Um, let's see what is what is said, how it's approached. I do have my opinions on this one topic. Are they are my opinions? Are they right? No. Or are they wrong? No, they're just my opinions. So I respect everyone's opinions in this thing. Uh, I know that the comments will probably get heated, but keep it civil. You know, remember, we're just working with opinions, guys, right now. So let's let's see what this this video does. All right, let's get into it and let's uh, see how many people we can get mad. All right, three, two, one, here we go. If you look at all the maps of the Spanish Empire you can find, you will notice that the Spaniards claimed far more land than they actually had. Claims that were sometimes outright ridiculous, costly, and completely unenforceable. However, in North America, not only did they claim more than they actually had, but being that they were the first to colonize the American continents, one has to wonder why they failed at enforcing all their claims. Claims that stretched from Alabama to Minnesota to Alaska and even to Hawaii, over a total of what are today 27 US states. Guns and property is the short answer. The Spanish came to the new world to conquer existing societies, build new societies and mold it all into their global empire. Unlike the Dutch, British and French who mainly had financial interests, the Spanish idea of empire had more in common with how the Romans built empires. They wished to export the Spanish way of life, assimilate conquered people into their society and enforce a Spanish social structure upon their subjects. And part of Spanish colonial life was that the colonials were strictly forbidden from owning firearms. Colonial subjects didn't own firearms or even property, but were mostly day laborers on plantations and mining complexes owned by corporate interests like the Basque Guipuscuan Trading Company. When Spain came to the New World, it encountered large native kingdoms such as the Aztecs, so Spain brought an army and conquered them. But when the Spaniards encountered nomadic native nations in places like Chile, Texas, Venezuela and New Mexico, they ran into trouble. You can conquer Tenochtitlan, but how do you conquer a constantly moving group of peoples not dependent on one particular spot of land? The Spaniards encountered the same nomadic warfare that bested the Romans, Russians and Chinese before them. And since they banned their citizens from owning firearms, the only way a semblance of security could be established was by an expensive military presence. Okay. In short, it was only safe to live where the Spanish crown stationed troops. Elsewhere, well, not so much. Caracas oh. was burned down by a native war band when it was garrisoned by the Spanish army. The Spaniards oh. fought an almost 300 year long war with the Apaches, Suma and Mansu throughout northern Mexico, Texas, Nevada and New Mexico. And unlike the wars we know from popular culture involving the Americans from much later, the Spaniards lost. Ranches were burnt to the ground, mines destroyed and entire towns pillaged and burnt. The oh. Spanish army was hopelessly lost in this vast region, perfect for ambushes and hit and run attacks. 
Spanish settlers were barred from owning any firearms or formed militias to defend themselves. Whatever expedition pushed further north and to the east didn't fare any better. Spanish expeditions sent to explore and settle Georgia, Alabama and Mississippi just disappeared, and presumably because they were wiped out by the Cherokee. Then in the 1600s, the Spaniards started executing Pueblo shamans for sorcery and witchcraft. The Pueblo, who were a settled people, rebelled and kicked the Spaniards out of Santa Fe and the Rio Grande Valley, restricting Spanish activity to southern Texas and California from then on. Okay, three minutes into this video. Interesting interesting history of this he's bringing in a lot of things that i may have learned at one point and probably forgotten um i didn't know this was going to be this kind of video so i guess we're learning if anything it uncovers something that is is rooted deep into the dna of the u.s so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he's getting at. But already, this is just like information overload. And what, what he's saying is probably, I would hope, historically accurate. Of course, there are going to be people that check this stuff. Um, but for the most part, the stuff he's saying as an American make, makes sense. It makes sense that it would cost Spain a lot of money to arm its troops and people would have to i guess start their villages civilizations towns around the battlements of a let's say a fort because they're not allowed to own any weapons so that's that's interesting in and of itself you know and let's not gloss over the complete decimation of the first nation uh tribes and that is something that is is heinous and should be talked about more um but anyway all right let's go back into it the Spanish colonial social order didn't allow for a successful settling of this area as it was unequipped to conquer and assimilate nomadic natives or patrol the vast lands. Okay. The British had a completely different colonial policy. They explicitly encouraged their colonial subjects to own firearms. More than that, they handed out the land they had taken from the natives to settlers. And that land, aka property, is the reason why most of these settlers came in the first place. Europe was a mess of large landowners, serfdom, high grain taxes and famines. Political rights, if existent at all, were also tied to how much property a person owned. Having a plot of land that was your own was a prospect irresistible to many and irresistible to the British crown was what these settlers would do on that property buy slaves grow cash crops sell them to British trading companies and thereby increase the wealth of the Empire and the British also allowed the means of defending that property the settlers would be personally invested in their colonial property and thereby the colonial economy the British would profit not have to spend money on an expensive large standing army could invest in a large navy to bully others and the armed colonials would would take care of the French, natives and Spaniards because they weren't just protecting the oh. empire but their own property. The mistake the British made in the end was assuming that this colonial strategy <laughs> yeah. wouldn't backfire. Yeah. That that's the colonial that's policy that's, of that's, handing out the land and That's that's you know and I feel like that's a tale as old as this tale and it's been repeated throughout history. Okay. <laughs> a big government comes in, props up the people to defend themselves. And guess what? It will never backfire, said everyone ever. Well, this is interesting because the the colonizers, the 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 the, the what they, what they call them, the colonials, the the people that came over, the expats from from uh, Great Britain, they were allowed to have firearms to protect property, so they could basically protect the investment of the crown so that the whole empire would still grow bigger and the English could reinvest money and allocate funds to other things rather than station troops across the pond. Got it. I'm just trying to stay with him on this. All right. 
and permitting the ownership of guns for settlers is one the British practiced in every colony they settled, which is why all these countries have less constraining laws on private gun ownership to this day, except for those who in modern days introduced gun control laws. The United States, however, is different from the other colonies. Guns and the gun culture that developed became tied to property. The reason one owned a gun was to protect what was yours or what you had taken from others. It became essential to the promise of the country to those who came to it, but also part of its darkest chapters. As much as you may read or hear of the American gun culture as something tied to a violent history, racism, hunting, frontier life or other, and as much as you might hear debates by legal scholars and politicians theorize the modern and past meanings of the Second Amendment, the truth of the matter is that this country's gun culture developed out of and goes hand in hand with the promise of owning your own property and being permitted to defend what is yours. And that is a powerful drive that is hard to break. German and French gun culture revolved around having guns to kill each other. Polish gun culture revolves around being prepared for invasion. Same with Swiss gun culture. And as Europe increasingly became a more peaceful place, these gun cultures and with them the ownership of guns eroded or were drastically changed and reinvented. The United States have barely enacted any regulations to limit ownership of firearms even when a sizable amount of the population used said firearms in an armed insurrection to keep slavery legal. If the Americans didn't restrict firearms ownership after they were used in an attempt to keep slavery legal, I doubt they will do so now after massacres and increased gun crime. There is however one thing that is steadily undermining the United States gun culture and might eventually be its undoing, something that is largely unnoticed in the modern gun debate. Ownership of private property is on the decline. And with the American gun culture being so deeply tied to property rights, what is most likely to in the end change the legal landscape on firearms in the United States is the change of American society itself from property owners into indebted rent-paying day laborers. It's... Alright, so... Like... I keep saying, or I've said this multiple times, you know, uh, throughout my conversations and my comings and goings with different people that have different points of view. Like, I understand that um, to to unpack this issue is a massive issue. Like, in order to start grasping the concept of, of the U.S. gun culture is, is to go back to its foundation. That's where we got to start if, if the conversation's there. Uh, at the end of the day, I feel like evil people are going to do evil things regardless. Um, that, that's just evil is evil. Um, I just feel like this is a massive topic. And being someone that, that was enlisted in the military, that is familiar with weapons, uh, the, the fear of owning or, or using weapons doesn't, doesn't scare me. It scares a lot of people. And I understand that too. And there's a lot of things, there's a lot of different things that go behind this. Um, and there are people that are better suited to talk in length about this certain topic, but I know that it's come up a couple times. Uh, in overall on Embrace the Suck 21 and over on this channel that, you know, <clears throat> like, it's just a different, it's a, it's a, it's a culture shock when people come from across the pond here, it's, it's all over the place. You know, for us, it's normal for you guys. It's something like alien. It's like, what the hell is going on? I understand that it's a terrifying thing, but how I personally, how I view this, and I'm going to try to step on as little toes as possible, but I understand we're still going to step on toes. Um, hear me out on this. I, I personally, I view my, the, the weapon as, as a, as a tool, just how I view a, a chainsaw or, you know, it gathers dust while it's locked away until I need it. You know what I mean? Like you have to be proficient in using the said system to prevent yourself from personal injury or, uh, unintended injury to others. Um, but yeah. Be proficient in what you're, you're, you're using. That's the best way to stay safe. And also, store it safely, store it uh, responsibly. And I, I view it no, no, just like a chainsaw to me. 
I don't use my chainsaw every day. I use it for when I cut down a tree, you know, or chop up logs or, or stuff like that. That's when I, when I use it, but I respect the tool for what it is. It's a tool, not a, I don't view it as a, a as a, as a weapon. It is a tool. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. You know, I, I understand that this is a, a very inflammatory subject, but it is interesting to talk about. It is interesting to bring up, you know, uh, I think just one video on this won't do it justice, but I'll see the comments and let's see what, let's see what happens because, you know, it is something that we are known for here, not just the, the, the owning of weapons, personal weapons, but also the, the tragedy surrounded said weapons you know it's it's all over the place and i know there's facts and stats and all this crazy stuff but it is something i wanted to like ease you guys into this topic i know that across the pond it is something just not believable that happens over here but over here it's normal it's everyday life so you know it's kind of like <laughs> like I can't even, I, I, I wouldn't even know where to draw a, a similarity, like how normal it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even think about a good, a good, a good horizontal, like comparison. But anyway, listen, this, this is about just opening your mind, guys. It's about a uh, healthy discourse, um, positive discourse. Like we know that this is one of those hot topics, but like I told you, like I told you guys, this is something that that I I think I can I can talk on, uh, understanding both sides of the coin, uh, but understanding the need of the coin itself. So, it is part of the American culture, American currency. That's what we do. You know, it, it is what it is. Until we don't, until we stop having it, it, hey, you know, whether you agree with it or not, it's part of the American culture. It is what it is. Whether it's a good part in your opinion or a bad part in your opinion, it's part of the American culture. So anyway, guys, much love. Hope you enjoy this video. Hope you enjoy the, the discourse, guys. Remember, we're here to learn. We're here to just embrace different things. Um, and just just look, guys, we're doing this thing. We're, this might be different. We might throw off a lot of people with this journey. But hey, you know, we're doing this thing. All right, guys, much love. Make sure you unplug and do something legendary. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.